East Market EN, which is all green across the board, yeah. as I noted earlier, what we do see are probably 10 shares out of the whole top 40 uh, down, uh, on, on, uh, down on the day. But the rest, with the exception of Impala Platinum, up Special in the sector. green. So yes. all sectors very nicely in the green. Should yeah. we read anything into it? Uh, well, I think that's a healthy sign, that it's a broad-based recovery. It's a looking at what must be driving it, yeah. a reasonably healthy state of the economy. I think let's just wait for GDP data coming out tomorrow. Right. We think it'll show a bit of an improvement on the, the, the second quarter, on the first quarter. A large part of that, mind you, is because of the, uh, uh, the end of the strike at Impala Platinum, right. because now we're being overtaken by another one, but yeah. that's into yeah. the third quarter. But nevertheless, I think we'll see some progress that's positive, whether it lasts to the end of the year remains to be seen. Okay. I want us to look yeah. first at the losers today because I think they may tell a different story as well. Right. We've got uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti down. We've got Army, uh, uh, sorry, ARM down. That's 1%. Uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti is down 1.6. BH Billiton almost flat on the day but not 0.1% down. Goldfields are uh, down as well 1.2%. So what I'm reading is that the big commodity producers were under pressure today. MTN yes. is also down, by the way, but otherwise, uh, take out the other two financial services companies, it's largely your commodity producers. Yes. Interesting, particularly the gold sector, because you mentioned two big producers there, and one would have thought that uh, with a weaker rand, uh, and with gold not going any further ahead, that that would have benefited, or gold, sorry, staying at a relatively high level, yeah. that would have benefited them. But it doesn't. Is there something more to it than that? I don't know. What's the market reading? Because the yellow yes. today, we, have, we had the Minister of Finance, sorry, not Minister of Finance, Mines <laughs> Minister, yes. Susan Chabang, and we're asking about some of these things, about, for instance, the violence at uh, Lone yes. and, of course, the factors behind it, what government is doing to try and make sure that things are right. Interestingly, one of the things that she said was that they were looking at the Liberal Relations Act they were looking at uh, the costs of the industry to mine. We do know South African sure. mines are among some of the deepest in the world. In fact, we've got some of the deepest mines in the world. Yes, absolutely. Would there um, perhaps that be priced into the market? Uh, n uh, perhaps, but I think, yes, disappointment that the minister didn't anticipate these sort of changes. Mm. After all, a significant portion of their income comes from the mining sector or came from the mining sector yeah. before the unrest and the interruption to the revenue going in that direction. But I think if we have to look at the gold mining sector, I'm afraid to say we have to consider this a sunset industry. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of the mines have got to marginal status, mm -hmm. low grade, mm -hmm. high cost. Uh, some of the better mines uh, have got to, with, with the higher grades yeah. are nevertheless wanting to go four to five kilometers underground. This involves huge capital cost. Are we going to get that capital inflow? Yeah. And at what price will yeah. that come to yeah. us? Yeah. There are very difficult questions. Uh, uh, labor unrest, uncertainty uh, uh, in, in some markets, for instance, the platinum sector. Yeah. Is the market for platinum there yeah. with declining growth in sales in Asia? Uh, I think that there are huge challenges in yeah. that area. Let me just get you right. So you yes. are saying the gold industry, we're talking about the sunset industry, but yes. not the whole of the South African mining sector. No. Though, one has to note the numbers here. The numbers are showing us that production of the overall mining sector is down yes. when you look uh, and compare it against 1994 figures. Oh, so yes. there's a declining trend here for the whole sector not yes. just the gold industry. No, no, absolutely right. And of course, a large part of it has to do with costs. You know, labor, the cost of labor has yeah. gone up. Well, that's not unfair. 47% according to some estimates. Sure, but the laborers were grossly underpaid. But well, maybe they're being overpaid for a pro productivity point of view. Yeah. They have not grown productivity okay. anywhere close to the increase in wages. That is a major problem for the industry. Okay, so let's go global. Now we've got the Brits on yes. holiday today, so thankfully yes. the markets are up in the green. We'll have to blame them for some of the troubles that we're seeing. But <laughs> everybody okay. seems to be looking to Jackson Hall. And yes. uh, 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 ben Benanke and what he's going to do or yes. say or not say. What yes. are you looking for from him? Well, two things. First of all, you said uh, London being closed today, and it's a prime factor there. Prices on the JSE are made in London and taken here because so many of the big resource companies have got more stock there, True. and the prices are made there and taken here. That's uh, very important. We lost leadership today. I say we should shut down London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as Jackson Hole is concerned, there are anticipations. You know, uh, after the minutes after the last FOMC meeting, they were surprisingly benign. 
and it just gave the impression that uh, perhaps even a majority of uh, governors in, in the, re in the uh, Fed are happy to see yeah. further quantitative easing. That means further liquidity injection. Where is it going to go? It's going to slosh around in financial markets, but it's also going to provide buoyancy mm -hmm. to some uh, assets, including precious metals. So we may get a little bit of a recovery in that respect. Yeah, the market may be uh, pacing ahead of itself, but I just thought it would yes. be interesting to read from what Ben Benanga said the last time, uh, that's two years ago when he went to Jackson Hall. He said the FOMOC is prepared to provide additional monetary accommodation through unconventional measures if yeah. it proves necessary. It did prove necessary, yes. especially if the outlook were to deteriorate significantly. Do you yes. see an outside, outside chance here that we could see the conditions, the global economy conditions, deteriorating significantly, significantly. which would yes. then entail QE3. That is the operative word, as you just so correctly stress. Uh, deteriorate, yes. Significantly, that's a matter, matter of determination, is whose speech is that. But also, don't forget that we've got an American election coming up. Mm. And remember, the chairman of the Should Fed... Should we is, care? It's a yes, because sure. it's a political appointment. So, you know, uh, so, so what will the chairman can't be unfriendly towards the administration in the US? Surely they're on the same side. So, I thought yes, he was we should independent. Care. <laughs> <laughs> no comments there, but, but no, I, I do think that it's important to bear that in mind. Um, but I, I think that they are very concerned about the health of the U.S. consumer. He provides 70% uh, of total U.S. economic activity. They must keep them afloat. Absolutely. And Krukshan said of Treasury Strategic Research at NetBank Capital.